Hi guys, Bert here from Rally Moto. Just wanted to run through a few of the new features on the app we're going to be using for blade and saddles. Lots of new kind of route confirmation, integration into speed zones, speed penalties that we haven't really used before in our remote rallies. So lots of new things going on, lots of new things in settings and we'll just cover that off now. For Blazing Saddles this year, we have a, a, there's a lot of new features in the app itself, which we'll run through in a minute, but there's also a new method of marking. The app is going to be waypoint driven. You have to hit all the waypoints to score your route completion. We're going to run through that in a minute, but a waypoint penalty is three points and built within the app as well is speed penalties. And they're 15 points every time you ping and that's all controlled by the app you will get your marks given to you at the end of the route on the screen and then you submit them to us at Rally HQ. So the first thing for Blazing Saddles is it's a different scoring system. Also, we put a lot more features and functionality into the app. The app has basically another band underneath the trip and that is the waypoint of instructions. So when you open it up, it will say navigate to start and you'll hit the start point and then everything kicks off and then you have to navigate to waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three, waypoint four. We'll run through all the waypoint systems and how it works in a video later on and you'll see exactly how, how it all operates. But also we've listened to your feedback and we've done some major changes and some major updates to the app. First of all, when you go to settings now, you've got basically a roadbook scroll function. So some of you said before, when you've got the remote working and it clicks on one, it moves the roadbook too far. So now we've built into the system a quarter, a half, three quarters and one. And one represents the old full movement. So you have a way of controlling how far you move the roadbook on by what you select in that system. Also in settings, you'll notice that you have, uh, you can run portrait or you can run landscape or you can run inverted landscape or inverted portrait, depends how your, how your tablet or your phone sits on the bike and how you want to view it. Also, we fixed a lot of issues where we had with uh, streaky graphics on the roadbook. We've fixed loading times, we've fixed loading speeds, etc. Also, you'll notice when you look at the new roadbooks, they're all pre-colored in for you and they're all marked up as per FIM pre-colored in roadbooks, basically, basically digital spec roadbooks. To activate everything on the Blaze and Saddles run, you'll need to hit the start point, the start waypoint, and that'll be indicated with a big green tick. Okay, then you need to go through the roadbook and hit the waypoints. And the waypoints are indicated by a blue circle with an M. On the outer limits of the road of the this waypoint indication, you will have a distance marker come up and an arrow to guide you into the to the waypoint itself. When you hit that blue circle, you hit the point where you're supposed to be at, you will get a green tick and a waypoint confirmation and the system will tell you to proceed to the next waypoint. If for any reason you can't hit that waypoint and we've kind of thought, you know, what happens if there's a road closure and you can't actually get to the waypoint, you have to hit the kind of next button. That next button appears in the bar where the waypoint instructions are. And that basically moves, allows you to ride to the next waypoint and get a green tick on the next waypoint. If you can't hit it, then you do get a three points or a penalty. But if you come to us at Rally HQ, we'll check your route against the GPS tracked route. And if there's a road closure there and you, and you haven't done it for a reason, we can take that penalty off manually and resubmit it to the leaderboard. Okay, so I'm going to move over to the uh, start point now. And I'm going to zero my trip on the exit of here. We're at the Cotswold Motor Hub. It's all a little bit busy. Okay, so our test route starts here. And basically we, we've seen a confirmation there on our, a big green tick to say we've got to navigate now to waypoint one. We're going to do a reset here. You can see we're straight into a speed zone, 70 mile an hour or 70 kilometers per hour. 
we're on ready to saw back rows but every stage of the road book will have a speed zone attached to it now so you have to be very careful we will change speed zones and the new blazing sandals route will actually be uh, marked on speed zones the system you can see has got an extra bar on it here and it says navigate to waypoint and uh, waypoint one so i now need to head off to waypoint one head off to the first point down the road uh, uh, so let's rock and roll As I approach this junction at uh, 0.25, I should see um, a notification come up to say I'm actually entering the speed zone for real. So hopefully we'll see that. There you go, at the bottom of the screen, we've got enter it for real and navigate to waypoint one. So we're gonna carry on. Uh, we're gonna check our mileage against that at that point and we'll catch you in a minute. So we see at 427, we're gonna take a right turn followed by a immediate almost immediate left turn you see the m here on the road book that's denoting a masked waypoint so this that is actually a waypoint one so waypoints are marked with a blue circle with an m in the middle so we'll watch what happens as we go and we approach that this will change as we we kind of get closer to the waypoint like in desert racing you have an outer circle on a waypoint and an inner circle and when we activate the outer circle it'll give us the arrow to take us in and show us the mileage or show us the distance we've got to go to get to the waypoint. The arrow will actually show us the direction as well to a certain extent so we just watch and that, learn about that process as we go through. So I'm looking out for that little right turn, sort of like a, just at an oblique angle of the main road. I can kind of see it coming up now. So, and then looking from the left turn. And what's happened here is we've pinged the outer radius on this uh, waypoint. So we're here and at 4.30 and we're kind of taking it. So we've got our tick and we've got notification to go to waypoint two. So that tells us we've hit that waypoint and it's all good um, and we can just carry on. If we have missed the waypoint or we couldn't find it, say the road was closed, we've got a button next to it that says next, which means you can actually miss the waypoint and it'll take you on to waypoint two. So like in Icebreaker, we had a lot of road closures. Uh, we've had to devise a way so if you don't hit a waypoint, you can move on. Okay, I've just come off the main road. I've taken this turning here at uh, 7.67. I've just pulled over. This is quit main highway and it's also the end of my 70 mile an hour speed limit. We're in mile an hour on this one because we set the set the file up to run in miles an hour. So it's no different to kilometers. If it's a kilometers road book, it would be in kilometers. So here we end at 70, but just down the road, we're going to go into a... Um, a severe speed zone through uh, through the Anderson Farms and we'll see what happens down there. We're still on our way to waypoint two so all we have to do is follow the road book through. Okay so we're going to head on down to uh, our little speed zone. So we've got a little junction on the right there, we've got the tree and we're into our speed zone and we've got a speed no notification at the bottom of our road book so we're in a 20 mile an hour speed zone okay then I'm heading into 12.7 uh, you can see I've already pinged the outer radius on the waypoint which is down here um, so basically I'm going to go through a crossroads and I'm going to go through a hard right turn and then I'm going to pick up the waypoint and then immediately afterwards I've got a right a left hand turn to carry on with the route okay so I can see the uh, 
crossroads just ahead of me. So we're going to uh, just run through again what happens on the screen when you pick up the waypoint. Okay, got a tick, navigate to waypoint three, so we're on our way again. Okay, so we haven't come far and we're already on uh, waypoint three. We can see the little next button to see if the road was closed or we couldn't get to it. We can just do a bypass on it. But in this case, we're just going to go down and we're going to uh, follow instructions to get to the uh, get to the uh, waypoint okay we're nearly at the end of the road book we had to do a reset we had to go and find a waypoint that's a little bit off the beaten path the box here is indicating that this is our last this is the end of the road book basically or the finish point and then we're going to turn left and head down to Dunkerton's and do a review. When we hit the finish point though, you will see a set of summary results coming up. So we're going to go and hit that waypoint, the final checkered flag, and see what the results look like. Okay, so let's roll. Okay, so I've kind of got to the end of the challenge. I've got my results, I've got the challenge name, I've got the route name, the classic mode hub test. So now all I've got to do um, to get those routes acknowledged and to send them to the server is submit to server. So it's sending. The SMS is sent to the server. So those results are now back with the uh, support desk at Rally HQ and uh, we can carry on to the finish. Okay. Okay, so there you have it. That's the new features in the app. Hope you guys have a great time doing Blazing Saddles and a great time doing some of the events we hope to do in this format in the future. Go for it, guys. Three, two, one. Go.